What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. Today we are taking on the Austin Lumberjacks who are in our division and getting very, very close to potentially taking the division. We are 7-3 and three, and the Lumberjacks are 5-4. and four, So we got to make sure that we are locked in and laser focused because we cannot allow them to creep any closer to that number one spot. And taking on the Lumberjacks today, we have two subscriber players on this team to highlight. So going to be going up against two of you guys here on the channel. And first and foremost, we have quarterback Michael Yakin, two-year pro out of Oklahoma. He is six foot one, 198 pounds. And Michael here, he's got a cannon for an arm, of course, with the 95 throw power. Also pretty accurate, especially in that short range. Deep and medium, nothing to trifle with either. But he is also very, very speedy. So dual threat quarterback for sure. So got to make sure that we are not only having a spy out there on the field today, but also our cornerbacks. They got to show up and show out today because Michael could be looking to beat us deep. Then we got tight end here, James Briner, SFL OG on this channel. One of the, if not the, one of the first subscribers to join the SFL here. He is a six foot three, 235 pound rookie tight end out of UNC. Started off uh, actually behind Noah Fant on the depth chart. He's a solid backup tight end, but he actually jumped Noah Fant on the depth chart, and he is now tight end number one. So just solid all around, you know, nothing crazy, nothing that's going to knock your socks off or blow you away, but he is a serviceable tight end. He can definitely get the job done, and I'm sure he will be receiving a lot of targets from fellow subscriber quarterback Michael Yakin today. So here in week 11, I thought it would be nice to highlight some of the stats of our subscribers players we got 28 subscribers in the sfl right now and if you don't know what's going on first go back and watch episode one it will explain everything but just to summarize i'm allowing subscribers on this channel to join the league as creative players we did a, a, a fantasy draft and relocated all 32 teams in the nfl and we have 28 subscribers in the sfl as creative players so if you guys would like to join i will pin a comment down below with all the credentials i would need and we can add you in the sfl next episode but taking a look at some of our subscriber players starting out with the canton condors here we have wide receiver Braden keys two-year pro out of lsu he is actually leading the condors in yards at 419 and also in touchdowns as well with five and the leaders in the sfl and receiving are around like the 700 800 range of course, you know, not everybody joined in in uh, week one. So some of the stats are going to be a bit skewed. But Braden here is doing a good job. And then we also got two defenders on the Condors as well. We have free safety Eli Sakowitz with 44 tackles. Again, leaders in the SFL in like the mid 80s. He's got two TFLs, no interceptions yet. But I'm sure that the first one is coming pretty soon. Has a nice forced fumble and also a fumble recovery as well as two pass deflections. And then cannot forget about his safety mate here, strong safety Mike Collins out of Rutgers. He has 39 tackles and two picks for Mike and a TFL and a forced fumble and a fumble recovery as well. Then we got the San Juan Tigers over in the NFC South. Four subscribers on this team. So can't believe that. That's awesome. We got wide receiver Nick Stoyer out of Ohio State, the Buckeye. He's got 169 yards on the season and also one touchdown. And then we got St. James here, curious case, for only four receptions for 16 yards. But for some reason, up until like a couple weeks ago, he was not getting worked into the depth chart. So I had to go in there and fix it. So I expect those stats to uh, to climb as the season progresses. Now, we also have two uh, cornerbacks, or I should say a cornerback and a safety on the team as well. We got King Love, rookie out of South Carolina, three interceptions. Wow. And he just joined the league a couple weeks ago. Hasn't even been in the SFL all that long. Also a big pass deflection as well. And then we got his, uh, or I'm sorry, he's a cornerback too. His cornerback mate, Dior Love. No interceptions, two pass deflections, and 22 tackles so far on the campaign. Albuquerque Armadillos are up next in the AFC West. Two subscribers on this on this team. We just played them and beat them. Uh, Bjorn Jeffrey here had a good game against us. I can tell you that much. 191 on the season with two touchdowns, so nothing crazy. But again, I think he joined uh, kind of later in the season and then taking a look at the defensive side of the ball 
we have our subscriber Arturo Esquivel who unfortunately got injured in the game that we played so did not get to really see him too much live in action having a pretty good season though he's got three sacks a big tfl a pass deflection and also 29 tackles so far yeezy fuentes on the virginia beach blues of the nfc south 282 yards so far on the season and four touchdowns virginia beach blues are the best team right now in the sfl only lost one game so far and i'm sure that yeezy here with his four tds leading the team as a matter of fact yeah most touchdowns on the team. I'm sure he is a big, big part of the Blues' success and going to look to see him keep that up on the right trend. Alexander Kalublek here on the Melbourne Dreadnoughts. He is a 5'11", 261-pound receiver. You heard me correctly. 193 yards so far on the season. He did join later as well. No touchdowns so far, but it is only a matter of time. I'll tell you what, when that uh, big 261-pound frame comes running at you with the full head of steam you better freaking get out of the way jack mavros here on the honolulu dragons of the nfc west only punter in the sfl so if you're a punter or kicker you want to join one of these squads here let me know in the comments and i will certainly add you but jack here rookie out of washington he has 10 touchbacks pretty good a long of 71 wow net average 47.6 so you know pretty good nothing uh i wouldn't say elite but he does average 51 yards per punt, so a very, very good all-around punter. And that long of 71, wow, you love to see it if you're a special teams coach. Jesse Buzo Jr., our QB here on the Dublin Shamrocks in the NFC East. Two-year pro out of Texas. Look at that QB of the future tag. We played him once already, did beat the Shamrocks, but he did play very good against us. 1,823 yards again. The passing leaders in the SFL, like the in the 2,500, I think as a matter of fact, Jordan Love, our quarterback, leads the SFL. He's got about 2,800. So Jesse, a little far off, but he joined a couple weeks in. 15 touchdowns, though, and five interceptions. So a really, really nice 3-1 to one touchdown to interception ratio. Get a look at the brother subscribers on the Paris Black Knights of the NFC North. We got quarterback Jaden Hayes, QB of the future and day one starter tag. You love to see it. He's at 1,324 yards, eight touchdowns to six interceptions. So would like to see that uh, TD interception ratio go up a bit. And of course, he is slinging the ball to his brother, Caleb Hayes, also out of Georgia. Caleb is at 287 through the air and also a big receiving touchdown so far on the season. Michael Briner here, linebacker, brother of James Briner, who we do play today on the Oakland Wizards. Rookie out of North Carolina. He's got 25 tackles on the season. One sack, but look at those TFLs. My man's got seven of them. That is good for second best on the team. Also a big, big pass deflection as well. So Michael Briner here is starting to come alive here in about the second half of the season. Sacramento Sentinels up next. Formerly the Rams in the NFC West. We got quarterback Rocky DiBernardo out of Florida and Rocky fellow YouTuber like myself make sure you check out his channel if you are into getting Madden tips and tricks my man's got some great schemes that he puts out very very frequently so go check out his channel if you're looking to get better at the game of Madden but Rocky here only 1400 yards but look at that touchdown interception ratio wow five to one with the 10 touchdowns and the two interceptions you love to see it rocky is playing great formerly the jaguars we got the orlando orbits up next on the docket two subscribers on this team we got halfback johnny waters out of ucla we played him several episodes ago and man oh man was he a bruiser in that game we did get the w but he showed up and showed out 368 on the ground only one touchdown but let's be honest he's playing with jonathan taylor on the team as well so I would say splitting reps with him is, <laughs> that's a win. Of course, Taylor, one of the best halfbacks in the game. And then also on the defensive side of the ball, we have a free safety here, Flash Parker. 35 tackles on the season and also a big interception to go along with a nice pass deflection as well. QB Derek Derrigosa out of Indiana playing for the Brooklyn Nighthawks, who of course in our division we played him too, and again, he played well, but we did beat the Nighthawks. I've only lost one game, might I add, against subscribers, so hopefully today is not any different going against the Lumberjacks. But Derek Derrigosa, he's at 1675 yards through the air, 
12 touchdowns and 7 picks. Not the greatest touchdown interception ratio. Would like to see that cleaned up a bit, but hey, you cannot argue with a positive TD interception ratio, right? Subscriber C Ben here on the Oklahoma City Antlers over in the NFC South. One year, two year man, I should say, out of Southern Miss. 29 tackles on the season, one interception and two pass deflections, but he only joined a couple episodes ago, so already making his mark, and the Antlers also second best team in the SFL, I believe, only behind, or maybe they're even tied with, the Virginia Beach Blues. These last couple of subscribers here joined the SFL pretty, pretty recently, so you're not going to see like some crazy stats, but still want to go ahead and highlight them anyways. We got Rookie out of Michigan State, Mason Buchanan, 488 yards so far, and zero interceptions also has slung six passing touchdowns and we do play the salt lake city bisons here in a few short weeks and then of course we also got our subscriber running back as well where's he at where's he hiding those gold dern bisons i'm gonna have to get on the phone with their gm call them and give them an earful they release my man nico pd back into free agency why would you do that 81 overall star dev running back and you're just gonna release him Back to free agency, really, really. All right, well, I'll tell you what, Nico, if you're watching this, never fear, brother. I am going to go, I'm going to march, get in my limo that doesn't exist or my private plane being a GM of the league. I'm going to fly down to Salt Lake City and I'm going to have a talking to that GM. We're going to get you back on the team, brother. Darian Woolcott here, halfback on the Elks, who we play next episode. No stats yet, but he just joined the league. So he should get his first action here today and this week. And by the time we see him, we'll know really like what type of true player he is. But we will see Darian here in just one week from today. So be on the lookout for that. And cannot forget about our team, the Toronto T-Birds here. We got newly added player Jay Monstro, rookie out of Iowa. Just added him. He's only been in for a game or game or two maybe. He already got a sack and already got three TFLs. Those are all three of his tackles as a matter of fact, were uh, TFLs. New running back, Tubby McDouble, who is looking like the real deal, playing alongside Kareem Hunt. He's already at 191 yards on the ground and two touchdowns, four big broken tackles, averaging over four yards per carry. So you love to see that. And can I forget about the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mike Oxmall, rookie out of Miami, 194 yards on the season and two touchdowns. He is starting to work his way into more and more sets. And I feel like if you guys watch the gameplay, we are calling his name a lot more in these recent weeks. All right, here we go, guys. Week 11, 7-3 Toronto Thunderbirds taking on the 5-4 Austin Lumberjacks. Of course, interdivision game, so you never know what to expect. And I think that we are going to go ahead and rock the alternate cream sickle looking uniforms. And if you guys are fired up for some more SFL content and you're loving this series, Please like the video, consider subscribing. I got two series going on right now in Madden 24, and I do drop content multiple times every single week. So without further ado, let's get over to Toronto, Canada and get ready for the game. Gotta love those flannel, flannel little uh, backdrops there on the helmet. Kind of slick, very different if you ask me, but here are the boys, your Toronto Thunderbirds. Hope you guys are liking the gameplay. This series is a little different. You know, I got my St. Louis Sentinels series my main series which is like the main franchise content but this one's more about the subscribers but we still do play the gameplay and i'm still trying my diddly darndest we're pretty good i think second or third best team in the sfl something like that and we're gonna start off with the ball here patrick peterson the longtime vet gonna get it stopped short at the 15 and our quarterback of course is jordan love leading the sfl in passing yards and i want to say third probably in touchdowns so he's almost at 3000 should be able to eclipse that today we'll start out single back with tubby mcdouble behind us gonna be a, a little play fake though and we do have an open receiver look at mike oxmall wow high degree of difficulty on that catch that was no easy feat nick hampton the rookie out of app state was right there as well as quay walker we'll take a look at the lumberjacks roster here shortly but what a dart from Jordan Love. Put it only in a place where Oxmall could catch it. And catch it, he did. That one was a beaut. Now we're going to get a look at Tubby McDouble here, our subscriber running back. Love that name, by the way. Big hole for, for Tubby. Picking up nine yards on his inaugural carry. 
Stats last week pretty good. Large sample size, but did have a big, big touchdown. We're going to go ahead and feed Tubby again. He told me he was on a strict diet of first downs. He was cutting everything else out of his diet. Looking pretty good so far. Two rushes for 11 yards. We're going to keep feeding him. We're going to keep feeding my man, The Rock. Coach is suggesting it as well. So I got to ID up this mic here and got a little hole on the right side. See if we can blast through it. Tubby with the strength. Look at him fall forward. It is very, very tough to bring McDouble down on first contact. He will shed through those blocks with the best of them, picking up eight yards on that one. Get a quick peek at the Lumberjacks defense. They got Nick Bosa on the left side. Got to always have eyes on him and Derek Brown. So pretty good. Uh, oh, yeah. And Sexy Dexy, very good defensive line. Might be tough to run, but so far, Tubby's doing well. Zach Bond is the left out, and then Quay Walker and Zaire Franklin being the mics. Marcus Davenport is the right out, so once you get past the defensive line, it's not as good. Tariq Wolin, lots of speed there. MJ Emerson, good. Jack Jones, decent as well. And then Andre Sisko, the free safety. Kirby Joseph is the strong safety, so their defense is, I mean, it's, it's decent. Nothing to play around with, but we should be able to hopefully carve them up today. Kind of like Waller just going streaking, right? I mean, he might be able to... Get open on the seam if Le oh that's a wounded duck wounded duck did give Waller a chance but uh, probably wasn't the best decision by me put my faith in McDouble on this short third and two and Tubby with tons of room he's got the fresh legs today he is running well finding the openings running through defenders Mike Oxmall got injured too that's no good don't want to see that no we definitely need Mike Coxmall here on this team. Now, I'll tell you what, one guy who has been showing up big is Olave. We are going to streak him. May be able to find the seam there with a good pass from Love. And it's a great pass from Love. He's been doing that all season, threading the needle. And Chris Olave, man, he was basically non existent for like playing Duck Duck Goose there as well. Silly Goose he is. But he was basically non existent for like the first third of the season, I would say. And boy, oh boy, has he really come alive here in the second half. He's been our go-to number one wide receiver for the last several weeks. Big, big touchdown to put the T-Birds on the board first. Michael Yakin, we showed him pre-game. He's, he's playing good. You know, got some good numbers. Nearing uh, 2,000 yards. Should probably definitely get that today. But just kind of like uh, Derek Derrigosa there on the Nighthawks. Got to kind of clean up that touchdown to interception ratio. Still positive, which is good. But our corners, we don't play, man. We got Patrick Peterson. We got Marcus Peters. We got some guys who can make some plays back there. There is a veteran Cordero Patterson. He fumbled it. He fumbled it and picked up by the Marcus Joyner. Will that be good? Will that be clean? I think it was because Patterson was trying to, to fight through, and he was, he was keeping those legs churning, and it appeared to be clean. I... It's hard to tell, but I think it is. And I would not be surprised if we don't even get a booth review. As I say that, booth reviews always get overturned in Madden. So Cordero, I think you dodged a bullet here, brother. Yeah, I never see booth review fumbles get overturned. Like if they do a booth review, pretty much it's coming back. It's always like that. See number 85 there, James Briner on the outside. Got to keep eyes on him. No, it's just going to be Brandon Cooks. So Yakin's first pass of the day is good for 20 and also gets the Lumberjacks to the 50-yard line, smack dab midfield. And this is a big one. If the Lumberjacks do win this game, right, they won't take the division because we uh, have not had our bye yet. So we would still be like a half game ahead of them, but they would be very, very close. And Cordero Patterson, got to watch all that trucking, man. You almost fumbled it on the last play, but that one was good. To bring it to second and inches. So Patterson might be a weapon here. We're going to use her up on Winfield. Going to cancel the blitz. It's right to Patrick Peterson. What did I literally just say? I don't know if Yakin can catch us dead legging it. Man, I, I, I literally just said our cornerbacks don't play. And Yakin, that touchdown interception ratio isn't great. And it just got a little bit worse, unfortunately, for him. Our defense is old, but I'm telling you, they are good. They're veterans. They've been around this league long enough to know what's going on. And these corners been pressing Olave as of late. Don't know if that's the right call. 
We're going to see. We'll see if Olave cooks his man on press. He did it again. This man can't be contained. This man cannot be contained. You got to put double teams on him. You got to have safety help because Olave has been doing this for about the last four weeks. And he's not showing any signs of stopping at all. And we are threatening to go up two scores here. Got Kareem Hunt trying to push the pile. Not going to be able to, but does get it down to the one-yard line. Now, in addition to the diet of first downs, Tubby told me he was also going to have a cheat day with some touchdowns. So let's go eating. Logan Thomas gets injured. Maybe he was blocking too hard. But it does not matter because Tubby was able to get the one tough yard that he needed. And we now go up 14-0, and we're only four and a half minutes to go until the second quarter. Got to shake it off, Michael. You got to shake it off. It's okay. It happens. You're a young quarterback in this league. It's going to happen more and more. But we got to make sure that uh, you're not phased back there, that you have some poise. Just play like it is the first play of the game. There's tight end Briner. Couldn't shake uh, Jordan Poyer there, but does pick up three. And now we got the Lumberjacks and Michael Yakin here in a third and seven. So, I mean, look, not saying this is a must pickup, but it's a, it's kind of a must pickup. Bobby Wagner blitzing and just a missed target there. He was going to Calvin Ridley, his number one wide receiver. And Yakin just missed it again. So these Austin... Lumberjacks cannot get anything going. Still a lot of football left to go, of course. But so far, they cannot get anything going as Brayden Mann is going to punt it back to Patrick Peterson. Peterson going to make our drive start from our own 36. And I'll tell you, for the Lumberjacks' sake, man, they better hope that they can stop us on this play because if we keep this drive going and punch it into the end zone, that's going to make life very very difficult for him, so let's come out shotgun here and see if somebody can get open on the dra drag. We got Waller. No, it's going to be intercepted there. You got to be kidding me. I was trying to lob it over the head of McCain because I had Waller leaking out here, as you'll see. I tried to, well, I don't know. I guess that was just a bad read by me. I don't think Waller would have ever been open there. Not really 100% sure what I was seeing, but I promise I'm not selling. May seem that way, but that's a huge, huge break for the uh, Lumberjacks. But the question is, what can they do with it? Maybe give it to number 33 Montgomery here. No, it's a quick RPO. It's Calvin Ridley, but only going to be a minimal gain. Got a spy out here on the field. I did mention pregame. Uh, Yakin does have some wheels. He's got that uh, 90 whatever speed. Oh, God. That should have been picked off by Poyer. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he might have some speed, but what he doesn't have so far to start this out is the vision. He's looking like uh, Sam Darnold when he was seeing ghosts out there because I'm not 100% sure what he's throwing to. So got to turn it around here. Big third and eight for him. See where Yakin decides to go. He's going to go down to the turf because Mr. Miles Garrett is going to have a huge sack lunch there. It's going to be a long field goal. They do got... Harrison Buck Bucker as their kicker. So he definitely could drill this about a 57 yarder. Going to be a tough one. Definitely not a gimme. And looks like he does sneak it through just barely. So points on the board for the Lumberjacks is good. But I'll tell you what, man. Michael Yakin, I love you, brother. Subscribe to this channel. So I'm eternally grateful. But uh, going to need you to go over that play art with the coach and kind of figure out what's going on. Because right now, it is looking a little, little bit rough. Going to come out uh, inside zone here to Kareem Hunt. See if he can pick this up. Nope. Dexter Lawrence got off his block instantly. That will take us to close to the end of the third, of the first. I'm going McDouble run on the draw. No way those linebackers don't drop back. And they did, but does anybody want to block? Does anybody want to block at all? That was Derek Brown. Just let him get into the backfield completely untouched. Didn't even put a fingernail on him. And, man, I'll tell you what. this We, we could have went up, uh, you know, 21, 28, nothing. But the Lumberjacks are catching some breaks here. See what Yakin and these Lumberjacks do here. We'll see if they give it to Montgomery. Haven't really seen him too much in this game so far. Going to see him there. And he is shut down for a minimal gain of five. Yakin's like, look, I need to just let my running back get involved here a little bit. 
because uh, the passing game has been a struggle. But I'll tell you what, if he can get Montgomery involved, that will maybe open up some shots for play action. And play action can be a uh, struggling quarterback's best friend. Uh, but he's uh, just going to go ahead and throw it to his bench over there on the sideline. All Madden 2, just in case anybody was wondering, uh, did not do any slider changing or difficulty changing here. So I, I don't do that on this series and my main series. I just keep everything the way that it is. Never change anything. So it's just uh, one of those games for Yak, and I guess... There we go. Okay. I don't know why I'm saying there we go. Look, I, I want him to do well, right? I want Yaka to do well. Of course I want to win, but I still want him to do well. Maybe getting that first down to Calvin Ridley can uh, kind of open things up for him a bit. We're sending heat. I'm going to do it. We're sending heat. Maybe even drop in Jordan Poyer down here. Hopefully it's not a play action. It is. And of course that was Poyer's man. That was James Briner. So the subscriber to subscriber connection is true. And the Lumberjacks keep this drive alive. Now James Briner is just trying to run over Antoine Winfield. Okay. It's easily the best drive here for the Jacks, as we'll call them. This time I'm not going to control on Poyer. Don't want to leave James Briner like I did last time. Don't know who that was going to. That was thrown right to the turf. May have been slight pressure there. I wasn't really uh, clued in on our defensive line too much. I think uh, we could safely guess pass. In this situation, right, it's obviously going to be a pass. Trying to get up on Miles Garrett here, which we will. See if Garrett can get in for a second sack and an overthrow. He was targeting Jalen Hyatt, the rookie out of Tennessee, and just missed him. They are in field goal range, so uh, sure they don't want to settle for a field goal, though. So let's see if our defense can play big. It might, they might not be in field goal range. That is Michael Pierce and others. Miles Garrett back there as well. Big, big sack on Michael Yakin, and that will, in fact, knock them out of field goal range. So a punt back to the Thunderbirds. Not what you wanted to see if you are a Lumberjacks fan. And we are going to start this drive from the 11, but now can we possibly do anything? Mention play action could be a quarterback's best friend. Yeah, Jordan Love needs a little bit of help. He's kind of cooled off and uh, see who can get open. That's a lave. Nice diving catch. Had to possession catch that thing because I knew the contact was going to be there. Way for uh, Olave to haul that thing in. That was clutch indeed. And we do get out of dangerous, dangerous territory. Should mention our uh, wide receiver number two, Zay Jones, is not here. He's played great for us too, but he is injured. Darren Waller, quick check down. Wow. Oh, he's still up, still going. Wow, Quay Walker couldn't wrap him up. And Waller is going to pick up five. Third and one here. No way. There's no way that Tubby McDouble cannot pick this up, especially with Darren Waller, extra blocker there in the backfield. Let's just run it up. Now I'm ready to be hurt again. The gut Tubby and it's Dexter Lawrence is a problem. And Mike Oxmall getting injured again. I knew it was going to be hard to run on these Lumberjacks. We started out doing a good job, but the combination of Dexter Lawrence, mainly just been Dexter Lawrence, really. I mean, let's be honest. Derek Brown was back there a couple times. Have not called... Nick Bosa's name yet, but Dexter Lawrence plays so well in Madden. Insta block sheds, and we're kind of uh, feeling the effects of that one here this evening. I'm telling you, man, we keep leaving the door cracked open for Yakin here. So far, he hasn't been able to really capitalize too much. This could be the one, though. Ooh, tried to hit Brandon Cooks. DJ Reed was in good coverage, was there just enough to alter it, and unfortunately, Mike Oxmall. Our wide receiver subscriber is not going to come back in this game, so that is highly unfortunate. Next man up mentality, so Marquise Goodwin going to come in. He's a speedster, so maybe we can find a way to utilize that. little shovel pass to Montgomery. It's going to work like a charm. Winfield there to stop him, but not before Montgomery did pick up a first down. We'll guess pass here and shade underneath. Probably I could see this being a run to Cordero, though, so... Uh, nope, it's going to be a pass indeed. Going for that time. Wow, there you go. It's Rondo Moore. Talk about speedsters. Boyer couldn't get the shoestring tackle. And how bad did the Lumberjacks need that? And what's going on? We scored, we scored 14 points in like the first five minutes of the game. And now all of a sudden can barely even pick up a first down. You got to be kidding me, man. I am going to have to, A, probably stop running it because Dexter Lawrence was born. 20-some uh, years ago, 
Lucky for the Lumberjacks, he's causing all kinds of problems. And I just got to start taking some shots, opening up with Jordan Love. He does not lead the SFL in passing yards for no reason. And we just got to kind of want to score, obviously, but want to also kind of drain some of this clock as well. Don't want to give the Lumberjacks the ball back if possible. See if out of Scantling. That should be money on the corner route, and he's still going. MVS, who's also had a couple big games, especially with the absence of Zay Jones, picks up a big one there. And finally, finally, we are back into Lumberjacks territory. A little gun power here for McDouble. Need a good pull from our left guard, and we're going to get it. Tubby, that's what I love about him, man. Rarely do you see him not fall forward. Like, you got to hit stick, or I should say uh, cut stick him, because rarely does he not fall, fall forward. You could tackle him for a five-yard gain, and he's going to make it an eight-yard gain just from that extra yardage. Let's give it to Tubby again here. Dexter Lawrence, I despise you, but nice first down, and that will take us to a two-minute warning here in the second. And I'm really not in any hurry to, to, you know, to snap this ball, get this ball off here if you guys don't know. I do typically rock with coach suggestions. Sometimes if Madden is being idiotic, which they we all know they, they will be and they can be, I might go my own path. But I try to stick with the coach suggestions. We'll see if uh, McDouble here can get a good positive gain on the screen as long as we have blockers, which we do. Stay in bounds, Tubby. Unfortunately, he did get out of bounds, which kind of sucks. I am freaking double teaming Dexter Lawrence, man. Tubby on the draw. But I need to see. I should triple team him, really, if I'm being honest. That's not even a thing, at least not in Madden. Tubby is going to get it to the three. And with a minute 16 left, I am in no rush to snap this ball. If we can do the proper clock management, this should be and will be the last uh, possession here, or at least close to it before halftime. And I get it. There's nobody on Olave, but my dumb self would probably throw a pick or get baited or something like that. So I'm just going to go to Tubby, and why not? Why not? It's touchdown season for Mr. McDouble. That's all he's done since he uh, joined the SFL and joined our team. That's all he's done is score touchdowns and get first downs, so you love to see it. Not the best clock management, though, as we do leave uh, 42 seconds on the clock. So we'll see what the Lumberjacks decide to do. But if all goes according to plan, we should be going into the locker room up 21-10 and getting the ball back as well. Yakin going for it all, and it's picked by Poyer. Oh, second interception of the game. And now we got three timeouts in 35 seconds, so maybe we try to get something going, extend this lead even further. Man, did not have to do that. I mean, I get it. Like, you're definitely trying to score points and get back into this game. But if it's not there, just, you know, take the check down or something. Kareem Hunt still going. Gonna go ahead and call a timeout here. Coach saying Tubby screen. I like it. I just want to get this first down, get out of bounds, preserve these two timeouts, and then start taking some shots here. Oh, God, Dexter Lawrence is coming at me, and no one's blocking. The other guy that we got to worry about, Derek Brown. And, I mean, we'll call a timeout, but, man, oh, man, this drive not going the way that I would like it to go either. Maybe Olave gets open, but if not, I'm dumping it down to Waller underneath. But, I th oh, he was getting open, but the pressure got there. The pressure got there, and no way that, look, both teams just completely sold <laughs> these last drives before halftime. No way the Lumberjacks do anything with, you know, close to 10 seconds left. So this should take us into halftime. And it does. So we are going to go into the locker room up 21-10, getting the ball coming out of the locker room as well. And uh, Lumberjacks and Michael Yakin starting to pick it up with the passing yards, but it's just those turnovers. Rushing yards are virtually equal as well. Okay, I need some of these probably deep routes to open up, I feel like. Uh, and as far as the game plan, I mean... Defend, I think I did defend short pass, and that has worked like a charm so far, so no need to change anything. And what what game am I watching slash playing? Because we definitely got the ball first, and I, I don't know. I, I'm speechless this whole time, sitting here thinking that we're going to get the ball, be able to double dip. No, now the Lumberjacks got a good chance to climb back into this thing. <laughs> Yeah, I completely misread that, didn't I? Wow, that's uh, that's something. Let's see if uh, Jay Mongstro, our subscriber tight end out of Iowa, let's see if he can get in the backfield, generate a little bit of pressure. Tell you what, this is Yakin's chance. 
He's getting chased down there by Garrett, and he has to throw away. So Yakin, 9 for 19, a buck 50. Does have that one big, big touchdown to Rondell Moore, but also has those two costly interceptions as well. And uh, just had to throw it away on that one. So I am going to send some heat at him. It's going to be a run to Montgomery. Bobby Wagner trying to chase him. He does, and that's going to make it a critical, critical third and inches for Austin. Going to send a safety blitz at him, man. You got to get this ball out quick, Michael, if you want to convert. And he is, wow, finds the target there, Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley has been a bit of a uh, safety net for Yakin, I would say. Okay, so zone didn't work, and I'm going to go back to man here. Maybe man will work a little bit better. I don't know. Yakin does have a bunch to his right. Got to watch uh, tight end James Briner, and it's, oh, I thought it was going to be an overthrow. Oh, Yakin dropped it in the bucket for Calvin Ridley. And see, what did I say, man? We kept leaving the door cracked open for him. And now they're at risk of making this a four-point game. So we got to kind of get our stuff together here. Blitz, definitely. And that's going to be a quick little RPO. Shut down there by Marcus Peters, but it was still a pickup of six. And now Yakin over 200. This uh, best the Lumberjacks have looked today by far. No doubt about it. And this time, ooh, out of the range there. Could not find the open man. It was good coverage by Zach Cunningham. Don't know about putting the seatbelt on yet. We haven't, uh, let's hold him to a field goal. Then you could go ahead and do the Jair Alexander little seatbelt celebration. But we still got work to do. So we're not going to be able to. It's Rondo Moore. Oh, my God. Miles Garrett basically clotheslined him. Big height and size difference, I would say, from Miles Garrett compared to Rondo Moore. Yeah, it's kind of uh, dangerous territory here, man. Yakin coming out empty. Got to get some guys in the backfield, hopefully. And nope. Just like that, we got a ball game, Brandon Cook. So now all the receivers getting involved. And we got ourselves a ball game. And they're actually going to go for two. Makes sense. Making a three-point game here. Let's see if, please, we can possibly prevent this. I need probably Zach Cunningham to drop back in coverage here. And a two-point conversion is good. Wow. So just like that, it's a field goal game. And I'll tell you what. Here we go. I'm going to audible this into verticals. Chris Olave is getting pressed. I'm going to put Marquise Goodwin on a drag just in case we need him. But they haven't been able to stop it. But I think this time they are not. Olave could score here. He's going to get chased down somehow by Andre Sisco. But when are these corners going to learn, man? You can't press with no safety help. They do it on my uh, St. Louis Sentinels franchise, too. I got Terry McLaurin as my wide receiver number one. He cooks on press all the time. And you cannot do that, especially when you're trying to when you're starting to mount a good comeback. Robert Sala, their coach over there, he's not happy, not loving it, but I am freaking McDonald's loving it here. And Tubby, I see a little opening there on the left side. Good block from Hughes check, but the other guys couldn't hold their blocks, and unfortunately, no gain on the play. Darren Waller's been pretty quiet as of late. Let's see maybe if uh, we can get him involved here. If not, we'll probably just check it down, and there we go. Right on cue, baby. Darren Waller's like, quiet, me? No. Let me show you how loud I can get here in Thunderbirds Field. But that was all started by the suspect pressing of Chris Olave. He's already cooked you a couple times. Why are you going to keep pressing him? And I'll tell you what, if you're going to keep pressing him, you got to have safety help, man. You got to have safety help. Back to a 10-point game. Let's see how the Jacks respond on this drive. Now, is this all of a sudden going to turn into a shootout? That's the question. It was looking like uh, it was going to be a defensive-minded game, but these receivers, Michael Yakin starting to, he's putting it together now. Putting it together. Great turnaround in the second half. These receivers... With Ridley and Rondell Moore and Brandon Cooks, they're all getting a ball, all getting involved, I should say, all taking their turns, making clutch catches. And right now, we really don't have a very good answer for him. And there's a wide open Rondell Moore on the curl. Defense needs you to step it up, please. And this one could, like I said, this could very well turn into a shootout. I thought it was going to be kind of a slow, sluggish game, low scoring game. But that's not looking like the case right now. Let's go back into man. Yakin's changing the play. He's changing it back. All right, back to pressure. Back and forth we go. 
When will the play calling stop? No one knows. Calvin Ridley knows. He knows how to catch the ball. That's on full display here today. I don't know what Robert Sala gave the boys in the locker room, but they are. Oh, it's a design run. No way. No way. Come on. Don't fumble, Yakin. Okay. Wasn't expecting that. But I guess we got to be mindful of it because, again, he does have that, uh, what was like, 82 speed or 82 agility. I don't know. He can run the football if need be. That much I do know. And this time, it's, uh, God, man. Now Yakin might uh, go for 400. Can't stop anything he's doing. You got to figure this is going to be a scoring situation or is or will it. Yeah, it sure will. Okay. Game is on. David Montgomery answers. We got ourselves a barn burner. Don't go anywhere. Have no idea how this one's going to finish. We are in for a wild finish. How about the Lumberjacks actually outpassing us now and outrushing us? They are out yardaging us. Is that a real thing? I don't know. Sounds good, though. And we better figure this thing out, man. There's no we have no business, no business being down in this game because uh, we have dominated throughout and starting to get a little dark here as well in uh, Thunderbirds field. Kareem Hunt, I need you to please block for me if you don't mind. And not sure what that flag is. Maybe roughing. Holding. Just holding. Open. Who is it, man? All right, Trent, you're good, buddy. But uh, let's simmer down on those penalties, please. All of a sudden, the momentum is uh, kind of shifting over to Austin. So we got to uh, play smart here. Who's... Oh, he got bumped on the route. Valdez Scantling. I don't like this, guys. I do not like this situation that we find ourselves in here. Third and 22. What do you do? I don't know. Hope and pray. Get the Vaseline. If need be, Olave. Olave. That was just nearly picked by Tariq Woolen. And for the first time today, the Lumberjacks have a chance to go up on the scoreboard. And with the way that they've been playing these... You know, last four, five, six drives. I don't know. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be able to do that unless our defense can figure it out and start playing good like they were in the first quarter. First quarter, you know, into the second, I feel like nothing Austin would call would work. And I feel like they could do no wrong. Doesn't matter what they call. We're not prepped to stop anything. They've certainly, certainly rebounded nicely. We'll see what they do on second and five. I got Leonard Floyd out here in coverage. Yakin just missed him. Third and five now. Got to find a way to stop him. And I just think that it's pressure. It's got to be pressure. Got to somehow get Jordan Poyer. No. Charles Cross, the tackle, gets hurt. But I thought pressure would have been the right thing to call. I'm not saying it wasn't. Uh, but Yakin just made a good read at, like he's been doing <laughs> for a while now. For about uh, two quarters, two and a half quarters maybe. And the Lumberjacks are threatening. Need a pick from DJ Reed. One thing, though, that completion percentage is not going to be very good for Yakin. Yes, pass. Shade outside. Going to go with the outside shade. Feel like Yakin's been trying to hit some Fuck yeah. out routes. There's the pick we needed. Thank you. Number three for Yakin and LaMarcus Joyner might score. My God, he is. Third pick. For Michael Yakin, Rondell Moore couldn't catch him. James Briner couldn't catch him. Lamarcus Joyner, eh, playing the violin. I don't know. With 850, I mean, definitely, like, I would I would start practicing, this, you know, the violin music. I wouldn't play it yet because there's still a lot of football left to go. I just, I would start prepping, you know, getting warmed up for it. I'm talking crap, I know. But that was clutch from Lamarcus Joyner. Probably his first pick on the season. And... That's going to make it really, really difficult for these Lumberjacks. Play good zone coverage, boys. That's all I'm asking. Third and five. This would probably be a go-for-it situation. I was controlling on Leonard Floyd, but you can't have a defensive end guarding a number one wide receiver or, as they say, I don't know. We'll see if Calvin Ridley truly is a number one wide receiver or not. That, that much is uh, up in the air, I would say. But regardless, any receiver, really, you can't have a defensive lineman guarding it. And, oh, Cordero Patterson. I don't think we tackled him. I think he just tripped. But, nonetheless, it's second and ten now. We got linebackers in the gaps. So, hopefully somebody can get home to 
Yakin, at least make him feel the pressure. It's screen. Is it screen? No, it's not. Cordero's blocking. Give me a pick or something. Oh, Moss from Calvin Ridley. Wow. That was Marcus Peters, too, who has played really well for us this season. Tons and tons of picks. Well, good handful of them, anyways. But just like that, it's still an interesting game. So these Lumberjacks just will not go away. Within a field goal, I will say if we march down here and score a touchdown, that's probably ball game. But we got to put words into actions and uh, got about six minutes or so to do it. I'll tell you what, one thing I'm not going to do is play conservative. So we're going to go play action and maybe look for a shot. Got to get... What a time to call Nick Bosa's name for the first time. I was trying to dump it off to Kyle Juszczyk there in the flat. And Nick Bosa just got there too quick. He's been non-existent, a non-factor in this game up until that point. Uh, but he was a big, big factor on that one. And that, uh, I, I no longer have that warm, fuzzy feeling. I'm going to have Marquise Goodwin streak. He is a speedster. Might have Kareem Hunt uh, out of the backfield on the Texas route. God, that was nearly picked by Quay Walker. Got to be aggressive here, though. Third and 20. We're coming out verticals. And now Nick Bosa, one sack, gets his X factor on. Lovely. Lovely indeed. Um, it's a pick. Should have been a pick. I didn't really know where to go there. My primary read was the slot guy. He never got open. And AJ Cole going to put it back to these Lumberjacks. And I don't know. How, how did we find ourselves here? Like, how did we end up here? 35-32, and it was 14-3 starting off in the first quarter. Cordero Patterson, best kick returner in NFL history. Looking pretty good here in the SFL as well. Oh, man, what is about to happen here? I cannot even fathom. I don't want to play overtime against these Lumberjacks. I can tell you that much. I don't know, man. They score a field goal. I mean, they're in field goal range now, more or less, right? They've already hit one from 57. So it was a close one, but they still hit it. So they are in field goal range. And I guess there's still a lot of time left, but we got to first find a way to stop him. Good run defense there. Able to uh, limit uh, Cordero Patterson to no gain. I'm going nickel blitz. I'm going nickel blitz. I'm going to have Leonard Floyd drop back as an extra coverage guy. And there it is, baby. There it is. Thank you so much. LaMarcus Joyner, interception and sack in this game. And that, just like earlier, deja vu at its finest, that actually does knock them out of field goal range. So all we got to do now is pick up some first downs. It's going to be healthy dose of Tubby McDouble. But maybe I should have fielded that because we're going to have to start this drive from the two. And when you got guys like, uh, I, don't, I don't like this one bit, man. I got to run away from Dexter Lawrence for sure. Tubby, show me something. No gain on the play because Dexter Lawrence is a freaking problem. I think we got to go something like Y-Stick, man. Quick uh, little slant here. Ooh, do I do it, though? Do I press Olave? That is the question. I'm going to. They got two X-Factors over there. So it's only going to be one read. Come on, Chris. Do it, Chris. That press is money. And five receptions for 155 yards for Olave. MJ Emerson makes the tackle. But not saying that that sealed the deal. Still got to pick up some first downs. But oh man, did that help. Come on, Tubby. Send us to the promised land, brother. One first down. And this should be ball game. Oh, I just needed, a, was that Graham Glasgow or Joe Tooney? One of them. I just needed him to hold that block, and we could have had it. Uh, it's been a tough, tough game for Tubby, but in fairness, when you're playing the likes of Dexter Lawrence and Derek Brown and Nick Bosa, although Nick Bosa has not really been a factor in this game, but still, it's going to be tough to get anything established, and I literally hate Dexter Lawrence with every fiber of my being. I think we got to go pass. I know if it's incomplete pass, then... It will allow them to save one of their timeouts, but a run play is not going to do it. I'm probably looking at Kareem Hunt out of the backfield, but that's not going to work either. And some may say a poor coaching decision. I don't think so. I mean, look, the way that Madden works, even if we would have ran it and forced them to use a timeout, Madden AI can drive the ball downfield in two-minute situations with ease. 
So I don't think that would have necessarily mattered. But a, a passing play that would have picked the first down up, that would have mattered. But this one, I don't know. Could very well be going to overtime. We'll have to see. Yakin flirting with 400 here. Can't even believe that. And I'm not really in necessarily the best coverage either. It's Briner. No, no, Briner gets it. Oh, I'm not liking this, guys. I'm not, I don't like the defense. I'm going to have to call a timeout. I do not like this defense that we're in. We're getting exploited right now. And, oh, my God, it's Rondell Moore. He's going to get out of bounds, too. You got to be kidding me. I mean, it's it's going to overtime bare minimum. But how about Michael Yakin in the resurgence? It's Briner. They might want to think about using this timeout, man. They're cutting it very close. Unless they're just playing for overtime, not sure. I wouldn't do that. I would definitely try to win this thing here. Um, but the clock, it's a design run. What's Yakin doing? He's breaking tackles. That's what he's doing. They got a timeout in their back pocket. Are they going to use it? I don't know what's going on here. I'm, I'm very scared. Clock is ticking. They're not using this timeout. They're going to spike it. It took you that long to spike the ball? Really? What? They got a timeout, but they're going for the field goal? What is this? Oh, Robert Sala needs to be fired. You got a timeout in your back pocket. And you're going to go... Wow. Well, boys and girls, if you're still with me, first of all, I apologize. This is going to be a long episode. I can, nothing I can do about it. I'll cut out as much as I can. But 35-35 and Patrick Peterson barring a crazy kick return. I mean, we'll definitely do a Hail Mary shot, try to, you know, draw a PI possibly. That has happened before. That definitely has happened. But barring something like that, I, I just can't even believe that we're here right now. I can't even believe that we're here right now. Come on, give me P.I. or something. P.I., it's a field goal. Nope. We're going to OT. So there you have it, 35-35. Michael Yakin has led his troops with four over 400 passing yards. And we will see who gets the ball first here. Yeah, hopefully it's us. We did get the ball first. So if we go down here and score a touchdown, that is ball game. If we score a field goal, they'll get the ball back. Chance to match. See what happens here in OT. All right, this ends now. Let's try screen pass to McDouble. Just got to get something positive. Why is Dexter Lawrence dropping out in coverage, but Tubby's still going? God dang, man. I took my hand off the controller. But Tubby, he was able to somehow uh, brush off that tackle there from Dexter Lawrence. But how does he read that so well? Like, he should be coming at the quarterback, Jordan Love, with a full head of steam. But it's like somehow he knew. Somehow he knew it was going to be a screen. McDouble got space. Don't let Tubby start cooking now. Lumberjacks, he's up to 74 yards. And got this ball all the way to midfield just like that. Come on, baby. I'm sick of playing these Austin Lumberjacks. Let's... Find a way to get the ball into the end zone. Please, Valdez Scantling, don't be picked. Oh, man, dude. Not sure how Kirby Joseph recovered that quick, but he certainly did. Second and 10, ball smack dab on midfield. We're coming out. Play action here, so give me a little bit of protection. That's MVS. Thank you. Coming in clutch. Now Jordan Love over 300. So how about over 700 passing yards combined? between these two quarterbacks. I mean, that is just crazy. Some would say, some would call it astronomical. I would I would call it fun and exciting. And let's see if Tubby can kind of lead the way for us here. Running behind Big Trent Williams, Dexter Lawrence that time tried. And Tubby's still able to fight forward for a couple. Come on, Tubby, lead the way for me, Tubby. Need some good blocks. Tubby dancing around, does forward progress. Get him the first down, it does not. So third and one here. What is the coach suggesting? I don't necessarily like any of these. Do I have anything? Uh, I don't have time to look for it. I wanted something like inside zone possibly, but uh, nothing is really showing up on the good old radar. So I guess we'll just run it obviously away from Dexter Lawrence. Yes, but the way he shed blocks, it might not even matter. 
Tubby, give me one yard. That's all I need. Come on. Oh, my own freaking offensive lineman was there. You got to be kidding me. Nope. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. We're going. We're going for the win. We're going for the win. I am going. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Halfback draw maybe could be the move. I know this is so dumb. So dumb. I do feel confident that we can get it though with halfback draw and we will be able to do just that. I'm not kicking a field goal here in overtime. No way, no how. Tubby coming up clutch. More Tubby runs. That's all it's going to be. Ah, can I get to the outside? Uh, Tubby don't have that speed. He's got the power, but he don't have that speed. We're going to go stick. Maybe Chris Olave gets open here. We'll have to see what these linebackers do. That's the problem. Uh, let's see. They are kind of blitzing. Olave, he catches it, but downed at the freaking one-yard line. We're going. I'm, I'm going away from coach suggestions here. Why stick? It has to be why stick to Chris Olave. I know I just called that, but this play has to be money. Show me Olave getting open. Chris, can you do it? Thank you. Wow, what a game, what a game, what a game. 41-35 is going to be your final. I don't know what the time's looking like in this video right now. I hope it's not too long. I'm going to try to make this video under an hour. It's got to be under an hour. But just so much happened, so much happened in this game, and it was a thriller so much to talk about. So the quarterback game here, Michael Yakin, three interceptions, but 434 yards through the air. You got to be kidding me. 64% completion. Jordan Love at 323 did have that one pick, but over 750 yards passing combined between these quarterbacks. Tubby with 90, gave him the ball way too much, but he was hungry, did have two touchdowns, and never really saw much from the Lumberjacks running game. And so many receivers, man. Rondo Moore, 160. Olave, 159. Ridley, 132. Cooks, 81. Like, James Briner, 5 for 55. It was just so many receivers came up. And uh, lots of picks. Bobby McCain had one for the Lumberjacks. Pat Pete for us. Jordan Poyer. LaMarcus Joyner. Miles Garrett, one and a half sacks. And, you know, uh, Nick Bosa had that big sack towards the end. But just so much to digest from that game, man. It was something. And we do end up getting the victory. But that, I would say, game of the year. Hands down, game of the year. No doubt about it. I am probably going to go through the week 11 stats of the subscriber players beginning of next episode. Because this one's going to be so long as it is. And I got to find a way to keep it, you know, under an hour but we advanced to 8 and 3, Lumberjacks 5 and 5. We are in full control of that division and what a freaking game. So fun, but also so stressful. But at the end of the day, we do come out with the victory. So that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.